Um, I'm Lee Wright. Um, definitely been talking to Andrea for a minute, off and on, right? And she has a great passion about wanting to create, well, develop and mature you guys as a group. Everybody's part of We're One, right? No. In the room? Everybody is not. All of our members are not here for various reasons, but okay. there, there are people that are starting business. Okay. Yeah, that benefit. Okay, okay. So, as the paper says, opening remarks, right? <laughs> <Which> is... <laughs> it's me. Okay, there you go. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. Glad you made it. Um, you know why we're here today? This is, we're getting our group together, and this, we're building a foundation. So I talked to Mr. Wright and um, I had talked to Mr. Wright through a mutual with my sister is the one that introduced Your us. Sister? And um, I talked to him when I first talked to him, you know how you can talk to someone and they'll make your vision start leaping and you feel all that. And when I talked to him, that's how it was. He, in the time that I've known him, he's challenged me in some areas, you know, challenged my thinking challenging what I've been taught. It's just been a good experience. So my thing was that if we could come in and get some foundational starts, and the foundation starts with us individually, to make sure we got skin in the game to do whatever we're setting out to do. Because one thing that I don't want to do, I don't want to try to prime or pump anyone to be a part of what we're doing. But at the same time, I want everybody to kind of glean off of the benefit in your own area of what you're doing. So we will have forums, we will have speakers, we have um, our financial advisor for our next meeting is here, Mr. Alex Williams. Thank you for the boom, appreciate it. And what both of these men have said to me from the beginning is, wait, we need to talk. Let's see if, you know, we connect in any kind of way. And I appreciated that because it doesn't make sense to try to connect with someone you're not connecting with. You know, it's like I'm speaking French, you speaking Spanish. We're not going to come together with that unless you're fluent. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, so I really do appreciate it. And I don't think that it's happenstance that we all met. And I'm just looking forward to what's going to come out of this. My main passion is in the black community. A lot of times we are put in survival mode. We don't know how to live. We don't know how to flourish. And it's time out for that. And everything is increasing as far as prices goes. You know, if we don't start putting something in place now for our children, our grandchildren, where are they going to be? I mean, honestly, $300,000 house a few years from now in their time, maybe six hundred. So I think that we need to get all the knowledge, the education in every level to give back that would be beneficial to our lineages that are coming up. So it's not just about us. And, you know, I hate cliches and I hate that people think of us as being crabs in a bucket. You know, I don't like that because I know I'm not a crab. I'm not in a bucket. Let's find the eagle so they can teach each other how to soar, you know, and that's what I'm about, honestly, because nobody can stop you with you. Just get the right people that you need to be grouped with on one accord, and I promise you will be so powerful, and you will go by leaps and bounds, and that's all I want. I don't want anybody that's pulling. I'm not saying don't challenge me. I want to be challenged, but in a healthy way, you know, that it's going to be beneficial to the whole team that's involved. So some people are here that's not part of the investment group, and it's okay because it's not all about the investment group. It's about helping our community. Because we're lacking in so many areas. So, um, Mr. Lee kind of challenges you in a, a different way. I'm going to let him do that. <laughs> oh, no. have you looking at yourself like, am I really ready for this? <laughs> but it's needed. Okay. All right. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. All right. Come on, man. Tell us about yourself. Come on over front. Oh. Hello. Hello. Okay, for those I didn't introduce myself to, my real name is Mark, Mark Frazier, um, but you, some of you may meet me as Tony. That means you know me personally, 
mm-hmm. because that's that's the way my family knows me. And so if you see someone and they say, "Hey, Tony," that means they've known me for a lot of years. <laughs> um, I'm I'm married. Been married for twenty eight years now. Um, I have three kids, six grandkids. Um, I work for AT and T as an engineer. I, I handle all the stuff that you see and you don't see outside. It takes your telephones work, and I've been doing that about twenty five years. I met Andrea through a relative of mine, and when I met her, you know how you can meet someone, you have a kindred spirit, it's like somebody you've known all your life, because it's like everything she was saying, I had already thought. And so her idea was like my idea, I was like, well, what, you know, I, I went home, I was like, how does she know all this stuff? And it, was, and it was a good feeling because you don't meet a lot of people who have that passion and have that desire and have that want. To, to do something, you know, to desire something is okay, but when you when you want it, it, it's a little bit different. And so that that's why I'm here to to do whatever I can. I'm I'm not looking to get rich from this. I'm getting close to being retired at some point, but you know, whatever I can do to help, you know, I, I look forward to the investment part. I look forward to the working together uh, as a community. Um, you young men inspire me. I think it's wonderful to see young black men who are doing what y'all do. It gives me hope that we have a generation that's coming through. As you said, there's a lot of, um, we, we talked about earlier, a lot of financial illiteracy in our community. Um, I think back when I had no credit, and, and I remember not understanding credit until I was a little bit older, you know, and, and I lost my credit over $200, $200 credit card at the mall, because it was twenty dollars a month. I'll pay it next month. It'll be be forty dollars. Not understanding how that ruined my credit. Mm-hmm. Just that, and 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 that happens a lot within our community because no one has ever explained those things to us. So, one of the things I would also like to see out of our group is that we work with guys like you, and we get this information out. So it's not just about us, because if it's just going to be about us, we're not going to ever make it anyway. Because there's so many of them who will take what little bit we have and we don't get it out. I think a guy told me a story a few weeks ago, and he made an analogy that we want to fight our own battles. And we and we put ourselves, we get ready for the war by going into a hole. And we stock this whole little cave full of all the stuff we need for supplies for ourselves. But what's, what's going to happen when the storm comes? You think the people outside are not going to come in and try to take your stuff? So, but if you got a village of people with all the same same skills, same supplies, same knowledge, you'll fight together and you'll stand with. Thank y'all. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's a, you know the deal. Hey, do you have a marker for this? Uh, ooh. Yeah, you got a treasure hunt. Yeah, I got a treasure hunt. Yeah, right. <laughs> all right. Well, if I had known I was gonna have to go second, I probably would have stayed on that end. Hey, well, we just, we just, hey. <laughs> So y'all didn't tell me that part. There you go. Boom, 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 boom. So, then the other thing is if Andrea told me to dress up, then I probably would have put some dress clothes on oh, today you good, because you good. I stepped out early this morning. Now, here, like one down. But I stepped yeah, out early this morning when it was still wet outside. So I had rain boots on. I took my dog out for a little day. Um, a little day date, and then I dropped her off and came right on back over here. But anyway, my name is Brandy Harrison. Um, I'm an upstate realtor here in Greenville. I service um, South Carolina, primarily just the upstate. Um, my background is in healthcare and healthcare management. So I've done that for like 20 years. Let's see, 2008. So yeah, like 20 years in healthcare management, and then I leaped out into real estate. And so now I am your upstate homegirl. So if you need a home, buy, sell, invest, um, I am here to help you. I met Andrea probably, yeah, probably at least 10 so years ago, uh, doing my hair um, through another friend. And so ever since then, we've kept in contact. And so I talked to her probably sometime last year in regards to investing in her doing some other stuff. And so um, we reconnected again. And I'm here. Um, any opportunity I get to kind of put myself in the room of other people, people who are doing bigger things than me, um, I want to be there if I can. You know what I'm saying? As so many other things we all could be doing, but we all made time to be here today. So um, whatever I can do to increase uh, the group 
and also myself and grow um, in every way possible, that's my goal. So um, if I can make it, I'm coming and I'm here and I'm excited about what we have going forward and where we're going to go. So um, good to meet everybody. Thank y'all for coming too. And we'll just see what's next. <laughs> All right, you next, right? Right here on the end. No, come on up. No, 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 no. You, you're fine. Come on, you with everybody. Nobody dressed right now. We're just here informal. We're enjoying ourselves. It's all fun. My name is Malibu Taylor, and I'm in the process of working on my insurance license. Okay. And that's about it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bus driver. <laughs> Hello to everybody. Hello. My name is Gloria Gary. Uh, I met Andrew, I want to say several months back, right? And, uh, love of spirit. Okay. Uh, we, uh, the three of us are not a part of the investment group. Okay. We're in the process of actually starting a girls uh, ministry. Okay. A girls group. Okay. Like a singing group or what? No, it is a, uh, it's a, okay. It's a what? It's a mentoring group. Okay. 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 And, um, being here today, I think she sort of summed some of that up for me, right? When, uh, when Andrea actually offered, put the offer out for me to actually attend, right? It was to basically see exactly what you guys actually were doing. Okay. And I know it's something, you know, that I'm not into. I, I haven't done. I haven't tried haven't been invited to anything like it. So I'm like, sure, you know, I come. But um, I'm happy to be here. It, it, it's always good to see just, for me, our community doing something, right? Because you know what? A lot of us don't hear a lot of us actually doing things. You know what I'm saying? It's sort of like, you know, look, you have a group doing it right, and the group keeps it to themselves. And you, know, you may hear about it, and then you may not hear about it. But um, I think that's all I want to say about myself. I'm just glad to be here. <laughs> There you go. What's up, Mel? It's <laughs> okay, you uh, Hello. Hello. My name is Maureen Perkins. I am, ooh, child, I'm proud to be 59. <laughs> I made it. Somebody said, I made it. Anyway, I have uh, two children. I've been married for 29 years. Uh, I have an awesome, awesome, when I tell you I have an awesome family, awesome support group phenomenal people in my life that have just just made me who I am now because I could have been something else doing something else but to know that knowledge is power and that to continue to put myself in presence of people with knowledge to gain more power is where I want to be I met Andrea what last month and she kept telling me, I know you from somewhere else. We're going to figure it out. But when we figure it out, we'll know. Okay. But for right now, it was just a month ago. <laughs> and she just, she just always had this light about her. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like she has a smile on, whether she smiles or not. It's always just glowing. She's glowing. To me, to me that's what she looks like to me. And I really appreciate and I'm so grateful for her even considering us to to come and be in y'all's presence. I thank y'all so much. Oh yeah. Good Good I was gonna go next after. Okay. Well, let me just say <laughs> I'm not a public speaker. I actually have stage fright, believe it or not, unless I'm one on one. Um, my, my name is Val Landy. I have a nursing background. Um, I work with Prisma. Um, I'm basically here just to try to be a part of something bigger than myself. I'm trying to, you know, grow financially. And I'm trying to just get as much knowledge as I can so that I can set a good foundation for my children. Um, pass on my knowledge so that they won't start behind the eight ball the way that I did. Um, I, you know, was always raised, you know, you work, you save money, you do. 
you can't <laughs> make money save That's money cool. you know what you. i mean so i am trying to um just learn more about what's out there and just try to be proactive so i can improve you know my life and the life of my children and their children and so forth <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You're next. I'm like super nervous right now. <laughs> My name is Tawanda Thompson. And I'm a travel nurse right now. I'm currently working. I just bought a house. It's messy right now, so I normally would not wear this. It's just grab <laughs> something, front on, and keep going. Um, I've been a nurse now for 11 years. I've been working as a surgical nurse for 15 years. Um, I met Miss Andrea. It's been eight years now, nine years. Wow. Yeah, because I've been living, I moved to South Carolina from Pittsburgh in September of 2014. So it's been a long time. And um, I've been married for three years. My husband, he is in working in Georgia. He actually is in Georgia. So I go back and forth between Georgia and South Carolina. So when she brought up, you know, investing, it kind of rang a bell because my husband and I, we, we're talking about wanting to start our own business and just don't know where to start and who to talk to. So when she said that, I was like, hmm, I'm going to latch on to her and see where this goes. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> hey, well, I wasn't expecting to speak today, <laughs> but yeah. I'm Kim Little. Um, I've been married for 19 years. We have three kids. I've been knowing Andrea for a very long time. <laughs> She's actually my sister. <laughs> so I know her very well. Um, and she does have a passion for this. She brought it to me um, about, you know, just wanting more out of life for us black people. You know, we need to kind of be elevated like the other races around us. And we just can't. We need to pull together and do it together. So I'm here today with an open mind. Um, and just want to gain knowledge and do better for my family, kids, and Thank you. Oh, that's the mic. That's all good. Yeah, just shoot it back over there. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. My name's Brenda Sweeney, and like Kim, I've been knowing Andrea all of her life. I'm her sister as well. So um, I am HR for a store you probably never heard the name of, but Walmart. And I've been with them for 15 years. Um, I'm just happy to be here today and talk about passion and dreaming and making things become a reality. That's our sister. So when she started talking about the investment group and just making a change, not only in our lives, but as she said, generations to come, I was all on board. Um, She's an awesome beautician, just throwing that out there. She's not doing your hair. She's been um, doing hair since she was like 12. Uh, so when she got licensed and went out to her, on her own, it was no surprise to me. Um, I'm just happy to be here. Nice to meet everybody. Um, and just can't wait to see what Mr. Wright has to teach us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to look in here. Maybe it will be working. So I want everybody to go to that QR code and go to the... Um, the My Bubble Opinion website, the, the, the home page in there. We used to keep everything down on the table because they packed up. You know, that's how it was open. I'll just do it from the phone because I can, if everybody can see it, I can talk. Okay, no problem. Okay. Let me know when you're there. Let me go there as well. Uh, I tell you what, I need to be more specific. My Arthur's website. Yeah. Go to that one. Yes, it's my Arthur's website. That was the the Facebook page, but go to this one, the Arthur's website. I think it'll be more correct. Yeah, you should see a bubble on it around and words and stuff like that, All right? Okay. So now if you looked at the QR code while everybody was talking, you should have seen a little bit about me, either on my LinkedIn um, or just somewhere on one of those links. 
Um, one of the unique things about coming together is being on the same mindset, no matter what you're doing in the experience, right? Mm -hmm. What you're doing, it has to be bonded. That, and, and why do I say that? I say that because support. Like the amazing lady said back there, hey, her family supports her. So it's pretty much, regardless of what she does, they're going to show up, right? So regardless of what you have going on individually, together you support each other through that journey, right? That's critical right there, right? And let me get one live thing out, right, is that you're not here for you. Sorry. You had those opportunities earlier before you got a family, before you come to enlightenment of you want to create. That's when it was, it was all about you then. Now it's about what you're giving back. Right? It's about what you're giving back right now. You know, I'm, I'm 56. And I say that because, man, you know, we're not promised too many years after the 50s. So if you, you're living in your truth right now, so how much more do you need? Think about that. How much more do you need than anything? Right? Excess. That's called excess, right? That's called the cultural conditioning, man. I want, I want to be able to show me, show myself to people so they can see me and look at me. Hey, look at what I've done. Look at what I've got. You know, we've been conditioned to believe that's the path, but it's not. The path is what you give. Period. Now, if you're thinking anything else other than that, see, you are truly brainwashed in the cultural conditions, um, conditioning phase. Truly. Because if you don't give your family the ability to create, but you engulf yourself in joining it, what have you done? Nothing. You know, we have a tendency to say um, the generational curse, right? That's crazy talk to me. It is. And I say that because once you know, you know. And once you don't give, you did that to the, the, last, the next generation. They're not cursed. You did it on purpose. Because somebody just sat here and said, if you don't share and come together, right? Because other people come together, right? Then what you're denying the generation. So it's not a curse. That's purpose. You did it on purpose because you knew. Right? So whenever you come to something like this and you have a, a great vocal mouthpiece, you know, and Andrea, 100%. Right. Um, I think we just start talking and I am how I am. I really don't care what people think about. Me. Right. I am how I am, but I'm good. And I know that. So, you know, you have to just roll with it. And I'm always going to be truthful. And I will challenge you. You said you weren't a good public speaker. You did pretty good. Now, yeah, that's it. That's all it's about. Getting up and be present. In your moment. Um, and, and I say that because as you look at this sheet that we have right here, it says the why. Right? And I just let you know a little bit, itty bitty about me, but it, I don't I don't care about that stuff, right? Because I am who I am right now. So I got like 28 years of military service. Um, I worked for a Department of Defense quite a few years as a as a global trainer. Right, uh, different sales. No, um, I worked at Walmart for a hot second when I first got out. Yeah, I did. I don't tell that story too much, but it helped. It helped shape me. Right, I was an assistant store manager. You remember they used to have that back in the day, right? Um, and I was at night shift. I was fixing the store back. Right? <laughs> oh Lord, um, but I was real good at it. Um, and then I went into. Uh, Department of Defense brought me in to do modeling and simulation, like create computer code. I didn't know how to do that crap, but I figured it out. And they made me a site manager. I'm like, me? Really? Okay, got it. And then they said, hey, we want you to go do something bigger for the Army. So I did that. And then I said, man, that's enough of that crap. 
So Advent Health, you know that in Florida, right? Advent Health, they're pretty big. They said, hey, we need a regional manager to manage between Jacksonville and Sanford, Florida. And we want you to do it. Okay, cool. So I managed eight campuses. They're training for doctors, nurses, medical simulation, et cetera. That's that type of stuff, right? Cool, got it, whatever. Um, I knew one thing about the healthcare system. They love commas after their name. Uh, they love it. I'm talking, if they hadn't done it in 20 years, they love that 20 year old comma, right? And can't stick anybody. Like, don't you want, don't want them to have a needle? Um, so it's not about those things, right? So I don't really care about any of that stuff. And I would tell you that, and I just did this since February. So I left big business and I bet on myself, right? Um, and I wrote five books. Uh, I just about to publish one, which I bought some with me. Uh, and it's in my bubble opinion. Uh, but it's about having your mindset and, you, and loving yourself properly right first. Because guess what? Let's be truthful now. You, get, you, you create a $50 million investment group. You still, you still individually had a tendency to do what you was conditioned to do with that wealth. And it's, it's, it's not your fault. You just auto action. Look at me. Hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. It's about me. It's about me. See, I said in the beginning, it's not. Because once you become enlightened, I don't care if you're 15, it's not about you anymore. All right? It's about making sure those that are coming get it. Because if they get it, you know, I think one of the things that the Bible says <laughs> is you teach folks to fish. That's true. That's 100% truth. Teach them to fish, man. You teach them to read. You teach them. Take ownership in your kids. Stop dumping them off on the school system because they don't care as much as you do. All right? Well, if you know how to count, teach your, sit down with your children or the folks, those teenagers around you that we talk about. Man, the teenagers nowadays, you know, the last generation say the same thing about us. We were wild. You know, but one thing that is true, they're more informed now, so they're a little bit more independent from our mentorship and guidance. All right? Say, so, hey, I can find out what I need to right now. I didn't have to wait till the next school day to get with folks who might have it to influence my behavior. And now I can get it immediately. And guess what? The source is critical to be good. You got to have that good source within you right here. What, what helped you make your decisions? Why are you even here? Why do you want to invest your hard earned money over all those years and opportunities and attempts to, why do you want to invest your money now? Why? Why do you want to invest your time? Why do you want to give somebody else your money to make the decisions that you know they already culturally conditioned to make decisions with your stuff? You want to do it because you have that caring heart within you to care somewhat. You just got to pinpoint it, right? Everybody has to pinpoint it. And, and that's what I'm here for. I'm not, you know what, I can teach you how to do options. I can teach you how to do these things. That's a whole different can of worms. But if you don't have your mind right in reference to your purpose of you, to you, not to everybody else around you, to yourself, and you have to stand firm in that because that's what you will start to do immediately once you identify your why, right? You know, why do I believe my, what my mama told me? And I still do it. And I'm just winging and hoping and praying it don't fail. But my mama told me that because she needed to control me 40 years ago. So the best way to control is autopilot. Everybody agree with that? So if I tell you something and you do it, whew, I ain't got to manage you as much. All right? The only thing I got to say is warn you, warn you, warn you. All right? So we pass those traditions. We pass those my mama said, my daddy said, my grandmama said, right? And that might have worked for them in their timeline. Might have worked perfect, perfectly, rather, right? 
Yeah. But think about it. You got to ask why on everything that you believe that you believe in. Now, it's not to minimize anything your mama and daddy them told you to do. Right? Because they might have been in a situation where they needed to give you something to control you enough so they can do what they had to do. Perfect. But it might not be a life lesson to carry on forever. Right? It was just there for that moment. Boom. Hey, it worked on you. Hey, you follow instructions. So let me give them to you. You have to ask that. Why? Because that generation that we're bringing up, if they never ask why, look at look who's going to tell them their why. Now, that was, that's what you should be afraid of because they got access to the world. And not just, I'm saying young-minded, not in age. Because mental maturity is critical, no matter what the age. Because I can be 56, man, and I'm doing what people that are not 56 are just doing. All right. So when you come together, you got to know your why. And it's baby steps, man, because I tell you what, it's painful to, to believe that you can do something and people around you should accept you because they have a title or they support you. You know, if they truly support you, you got to know, you got to know. So that way you can move forward on what your passions are. You know, you have to. And I, I say that because. It's going to it's going to make a difference when you're investing your money and losing all of it. What's your passion is about you saying, hey, look at me. Or is your passion about changing that generation that needs it? So anybody know starting a business or investing, man, it's, it's painful, right? For a minute. It's a lot of work goes into it as well. But as you understand your why, you're OK with it without emotion. Without emotion, just think about what you do and you don't even think about it emotionally. That's what you got to have within you on everything you do. You know, people say, well, I got to always have to say the 180, right? Well, you got to care. Nobody say they don't care. Well, you got to be respectful. Nobody say don't be respect. Disre Nobody say don't be to be disrespectful. Nobody say be disrespectful to folks. That's crazy talk. Well, you selfish. I am. Because if I don't make sure I got my why, how can I teach you how to have yours? It's the source. What kind of source are you, right? You have to think about that. Because, man, I, hey, come on now. As we grew up, everybody got something to say about how we're supposed to live our lives. Everybody, uncle, crazy uncle, auntie, you know, great grandmama. Friend in the street, so-called. Everybody, hey, just make sure you do this. And no, nobody was there to mentor you through it. So how did we live? Trial and error. You should have enough of that crap. And that's why you know your why. You started discovering your why. Say, man, I'm tired of trial and error. And the best way to do that is learn yourself about your passion, about your why. Everybody agree with that a little bit? All right, a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. What's my why? That's the first thing you need to ask yourself. What is your why? It's not about investing. That is so far from the truth. It has nothing to do with that. It's about your inner essence of what you and who you are. That's your why that you can do automatically without thinking. Or without considering the influences around you. Because then that's not your why. That's you saying, hey, look at me. You want to make sure you line up with folks looking at you. So they'll accept you. See, that's not your why. That's the conditioning that, you're, that, that you feel comfy with. It's hard work discovering your why, man. Because there's some stuff in there whew, that we just don't think to talk to ourselves about. And accept. You know? So that's one thing, your why. Um, so now, you know, Andrea's doing all this, man, getting her folks together, 
the sisters, the friends, the folks with titles, the people who have passion to be. Yes, let's get together. Let's have a meeting. We can change the world. We can do what black folks should do. We can do what the other races should do. Okay, erase that. You got to do what you can do. Because it's not about them. You see, I keep going back to you, but it's about you. Because if you understand that, what you have to offer up, you paying attention, and it's going to be the perfect recipe that you build as you build this organization. And man, I tell you now, whoo. So I said I wrote five books, right? I started back in April, I think, from just notes of, just notes. I had always just wrote little notes down. And I wrote five books within two months. Yeah. No, I had it's just in my head though. I, I did a lot of titles, I did a lot of headings, and I th those came out to me, and I can I can think of them, and I know how they are within me. All right. Um, but understand this: I've never been an author. I've never started a publishing company. I've never even known how to publish anything. And if I tell you how many hours I probably put in between now and then, and even up until this morning, right? You'd be like, really? Yeah, because that's, that's my why. And nobody's going to do it for me. Nobody's going to discover your why for you. Now, you will have folks around you that skim off of your why. You know what skimming is, right? Not scamming. Skimming is just the surface. Right, And they'll skim off your hard work, they'll skim off your passion, they'll skim off your unknown why of you, but you're conditioned to just provide and be there and support. Right, And guess what? That's why you always have to give yourself your best first. You have to be selfish. How do you do that? Educate, self-educate. How do you do that? Hey, you, hey, if you know you need to get healthy, you get healthy. So you can help. See, that's, it's, all, it's all designed around helping everything outside of you be better. But that's that individual truth. All right? It's important because it goes right into you. What do you have to offer up to this organization or the organizations you're creating? What? Man, you might be weak. And as soon as it get tough, you fold. Or you're like, oh, I'll do it later. Or I'll, get some, I'll pay somebody else to do what you know you should learn to do in self-education, so that way when it wiggles, you know how to bring it back in line. So you can keep being driven and keep going forward. But if we dump stuff on other people to do for us, man, when it wiggle, that could take our drive from us. Because we know it's hard work. You see, what do you offer up? What are you offering up to your organizations or this group? Or even your so-called friendships. Now, you, I don't know if you call each other friends, but man, that comes with a that comes with a high commitment. So be careful with your titles that you give people automatically, without them earning it. I don't care what title it is, mama, daddy, cousin. It can't matter. It's a title, and everybody don't want the title you give them. Remember that now. Some people are like, yes, I can do that. Some people are like, I don't know why they call me friend. They're not a friend to me. What do you offer up? What is your why? See, once you understand and start working with baby steps on understanding your why, it's no matter what goes on around you, you know you're the best source for that decision. Now, as you know you're the best source, you know what you can offer up without a doubt. Say, so you know what? I don't know that yet, but boy, I'm going to do what it takes to know it because I want to offer it up with the best possible effect on the group or me. So, so just kind of look at that. You know? you know, as you take notes and think about it, take notes. Always take notes for yourself because, man, I know one thing. We forget stuff. You know, we forget stuff. So I say that I'm saying these two things right now because it's going to come a time where you guys might have for your business or as the group a million dollars. 
or more. Properties, investments going decent, everything's looking good, then you lose half of it. There's some pain in that. There's some confusion in it too. Like, what did we do? How did we get back to, to get on the focus with this new mental flexibility we got to have? All right, let's do it. See, that's when you know you why. That's when you know what you offer up. You see how I'm bringing it all back together? Yeah. So you have to work on those things within yourself. And how do you do that? Have conversations with the, with each other. You know, talk to me. You call me and I, hey, she know the deal. I'm going to we have a conversation like I'm talking now. All right, because I care. You know, um, and, and one thing that I have to say is we have to trust each other more. We really do. All right, and, and man, that's probably a cliche and vague. It is. It's 100% vague. But boy, when you know your why, and you guys are grouping together, you having these conversations, that's going to build a bond. That, yeah, I can trust them. I can trust her. I can trust him. What are we trusting them with? Now, most people say they, they, their life, their social life, and all their personal business. Now, if you choose to do that, something's wrong with you. You should be focusing on your passion. Right? You should be talking and having conversations about your passion, the things that you want to give back. That's critical in your conversations. And I'm going to help you out a little bit, right? Um, one thing, I wrote the bubble, my bubble opinion in layers. And if you look at the layers on the, on the go to the page real quick. I'm going to give you just a quick thingy. While you're going to the page, let me make sure this thing is not dying. <laughs> That is still good. Yeah, how much time is it? 15 minutes. Hey, give me a, a seven minute thing. I just stop and start. So, as you can see, that you're in the middle of this thing. That's you. Right now, that's you. That's not me. It says me, but me is you. And me is me. Right? It's my you. So, look at that first layer around you. You see how it's solid? On that black line, before the gaps of the black, you see how it's solid. Okay, just take a look at that. That's what we. That's what we have to get to, to where we understand our why, and you know what feeds us, our sources, our you know self education, and all these things. They help build that thing around you where you can stand up on your why, and not care about anything outside of it. And that's you loving yourself first. That's you giving to yourself first. The best. Now, if you don't think you should give your best, I don't care if you're married. I don't care if you have children. I don't care about any of that. If you're not giving yourself your best first every day, uh, that's your mental cultural conditioning. To give and sacrifice for everything around you. Not understanding you can't even sacrifice if you're not at your best. That makes sense, don't it? So just think about that. So now the next thing right here is I put those gaps in there for a reason because that's that's how you give stuff out and that's how stuff tries to come in. All right, go ahead. Oh, it's uh, mybubbleopinion.com. And I want everybody to kind of look at those words around there. As you see on the outside, you see where that's most of the influence is coming in, right? On the outside of that thing, on that outside layer. And that's rare for a reason because you don't know those folks. You don't know those things and how they affect you. So they got to stay in the red area. Why? Because you got to proceed with caution. You have to on all those things and more. It's your individuals, right? Your individual things. You gotta let it. You can, hey, like you can't just let that stuff come in and influence you. No, and then you get into that green area. That green area is, is trusted agent folks, folks that you trust. Hey, I trust them. They, hey, they deserve their title because they gave it to themselves, and I acknowledged it. 
So kind of just look at that for a little bit. I don't want to go into it now, but that's the expectations. That goes right into the expectations of me, and me is you. What's expected of you when you start in this business? What's expected of you? What are you, th what are you doing? What's, your, what's the expectations that this business expects of you? Not what you expect of yourself. Because there's a lot of unknowns in there, right? About things you gotta do, things you gotta learn, etc. What does this business expect you to do? I think it kind of expects you to do your research. It expects you to get knowledgeable. It expects you to have good folks around you that understand things you don't. Right? And and I would say this right here, one of the most important, well, I might say most important things a lot. But a very important thing is always surround yourself with folks smarter than you. You have to. You have to look for them. Because that's where you grow. That's where it comes where you challenge yourself because you know what? I can do that. I can do, I can be part of this. I'll do what it takes. Um, so anything that you do, you got to think about what does that thing you're doing expect of you. And then what do the folks around you that you're part of in this group? or your business, employees, partners, folks um, contributing, what do they expect of you? All right, just like you expect things of, what is, what's the expectation? And it should be vast. And everybody should hold themselves individually accountable to meet the expectation of the thing they're venturing in. I, had, I think before it was um, where um, I thought about doing a a, um, a group, an investment group back in, man, what was this, like 98, 99. Um, I was doing the old fashioned way, man. You know, you, you buy stock, you had to get with the, go to the company and you get this form, you put a check in it, you send it to them and they mail your certificate back. That's how I bought my first Disney stocks. Just like that. That's the first talk I wanted. Oh my God, Disney, what in the world? Right? Um, but it was a process. It was a process to that. And, and I say that because now it's so easy in any investment market for people to make it look easy. But they want you to be confused so you depend on them to lead you. Oh, yeah, get into that. You can do it. But, man, you know what? When you're thinking about the delta of an option, nobody says anything about the delta. All those Greek letters that come in, you know, the option chain when determining it. But that's just no different than the individual businesses that you're going in or this group is that, hey, I can't just dump my money in somebody's lap and expect them. Now, that's the weird part. <laughs> expect them to make sure I'm good. What? Come on, man. Nobody does that. You can't even dump your money in a savings account and expect to get the interest they say you're going to get. Right? And they say, yeah, thank you. Uh, we're going to charge Fred 17% for your money that we give you 0 .00 for. Crazy cool, right? But they've been doing this from the beginning. All right? So that's what I say. What's expected of you, me, when you do anything? Now that goes, now, hey, that goes into the person, you know, your why as well. What does those around you expect of you? Is it the condition mindset they're dumping on you? Right? Well, you're supposed to have a dog, two kids, a picket fence, a car in the garage, a big house, and we're supposed to stand out front like stick people happy with little birds in the background. That's what I knew growing up, right? Everybody saw that picture. I can, hey, it's, it's imprinted. But it's not the truth. You know, I look at that a couple ways. I look like, I look at that as big business saying, hey, keep chasing this carrot. We got you. Help us make these millions by chasing this picture that doesn't, not even three dimensional. It's like a little kid drew it. I think the school probably made us do that, too, if I think about it growing up. Draw a picture of your family. And the picture we drew was that image as close as possible. 
Yeah. So that's why you have to get your why. And it, it mean, we have so many things that's imprinted in us. Who we that we have the challenge and we have to ask questions on it. Um, because a lot is expected of you. When you came in this room, you know, a lot is expected of you to get up and talk. That's expected. Because you have a voice. You didn't come here in silence. You didn't come here caring about what somebody thought about you. Because if you did, you're in the wrong space. Because it's not about you. There we go. Went right back to it. It's about what you're trying to create so those behind us or even in front of us can have something and they don't think about a curse. And I know it's kind of silent. It's silent, right? And I'm kind of just giving info. I hadn't asked any questions yet, but I am. But they're easy answers to it. Um, because I expect things of you. <clears throat> I do. For one, I expect that you should be different today. A little bit. And, under, and start kind of archiving those baby steps you need to take to discover your why. And it's okay. Guess what, man? One thing about age, what you got to lose? No matter what age you are, time is disrespectful and it's going to keep on riding. So what you got to lose? One thing you have to lose, you have to lose, is folks around you that are not true with their title. They will remove themselves. Perfect. Perfect. Your consistency on things of you, your why, starts to present itself. And when it's consistent, people are like, whoa, um, I can't hang around them that much because they don't talk stuff I talk. So I'll find the folks that talk stuff I talk. All right? That's perfect. That's what I expect of you. That's what I expect of myself to stay like I am. Because if I if I put those carrots, if we keep those carrots dangling, we, you can never catch it. Understand that you're gonna stay hungry. You're gonna starve out. If we keep chasing them, yeah. If I do this, I can show people I can do this. If I do this, man, people are gonna appreciate me. Man, if I do this, that'll make these people closer to me. Man, if I do this, I did exactly what my mama told me to do. They're going to be proud of me. Who's going to be proud of you? Your mom probably said, Whoo, I don't know how you did that. All your life, really? I stopped doing that after I told you that. <laughs> That's funny, but true. Because it was that thing I said it was. Maybe. See, I'm getting you guys like, what in the world are we talking about? Investment group. Business. The frustration that you're going to encounter every time. Loss. Confusion. People. Look at me. You're going to say that. Look at me. Oh, got you. Well, as soon as you do it, you're like, oh, man, Lee, I hate you. Oh, yeah, this is what I'm doing. And you automatically know dreams are made to be shattered by other people. Except for the people that have the same dreams. They get it. So if you're, if you're sharing with people that don't have your dreams, expect them to be shattered. Immediately. Without pause. It's one thing I say it makes people laugh, but it makes total sense to me. Right? Have you ever seen someone chasing a chicken before? Have you? Right? You haven't yet? Okay. It's difficult. Most boxers do it because they help them on their feet. They help them get light footed and they can get, you know, they can print, um, implant, stop, and move to the left and right. So they kind of do that. There you go. Agility, right? Flexibility. So think about it like this and think about yourself because I am a victim. I'm not as much victimized as now, like I used to be. Think about all the thoughts in, you, in your head as an individual chicken you're trying to chase. Trying to get that chicken caught and get it in the coop. 
It might be you help everybody. So you're trying to solve everybody's problem. Each individual person is a chicken that you're trying to catch. And that mug ain't trying to be caught. Right? So think about the things that goes on in your mind. If it's relationship, if it's money, if it's being that good example. All these are chickens. Every, so you can say, okay, I got, man, I probably got 50 chickens a day I got to catch. Some of them just run wild. They don't even lay eggs. That's bad. You got chickens, <laughs> free reigning chickens ain't laying eggs. Something wrong with that. Like how they eating? They eating off your hard work. They skimming. <sighs> because they know you're going to be there and sacrifice. So they don't have to work. Like, hey, I just, oh, my God, oh, my God, what in the world? And they wait for it because you have a tolerance for it now. You do because you're older. But, boy, they keep skimming. They keep poking. You're like, all right, go. Hey, that's my son. Boy, now, don't you do that again. Now, this is the last time. And you let the chicken go. Ooh, get out the coop. And it's free to run wild. So think about it. I know it's funny. It, it, it tickles me when I think about it. But you have to, you know, with baby steps, start taking control of those chickens, right? It might be you want to ha start an investment group. It might be you want to accomplish this project. Everything is a chick, individual chicken that's got to be caught and controlled and put in the coop. Now, this is the kicker. The coop can only hold so many. Let that bake for a hot second. Like, oh my God, I got a hundred fucking, oh. <laughs> oh my God, I got a hundred chickens running around in my head. The coop only holds 10. Think about that. It holds 10. So some fat got to be trimmed in there. Everybody agree with that? Every chicken can't be a priority. Here we go. It's going to help. You, your why? Because you're going to free that chicken catching time up. So it's going to help your why. It's going to help you give time to who? You. Because you got to let chickens handle their own chicken stuff. It's okay. Now, guess what? Now, as you allow this to happen, that cultural condition is that guilt trip is going to be placed upon you automatically and even by yourself. Like, oh man, you know. I got to, I should. I want to make sure everybody, when they look at me, they say, yep, they tried. They did. Man, what? And that person, a professional skimmer. Because they don't care who they get it from. <laughs> and guess what now? Hold on. The, the, guess what the kicker is? If you slow on it, they're going to let you know. Like, oh, like, like dog. Dang, Ma, really? Like, Ma, what, you, your leg hurt. What, when are you going back to work? How long are you going to be out? Hey, I'm trying to go over here and do this stuff. Can, I, can you? And I say that, but that's part, and I'm talking about family dynamics, but guess what? It's employment dynamics. It's trying to grow a team dynamics. You see? Why do I say a team? Because guess what teams do? Lazy team members dump stuff on hardworking team members. And I talk about skinning the game now. Skinning the game. Woo! Yeah, who's going to be the treasurer? Who's going to help with the membership? Who's going to be the person that's in charge of training? You see what I'm saying? All these are things. Skinning the game. If I have to tell you, you don't want to do it. What do I offer? What's my why? See what I'm saying? You can go either direction with this. What's my why? What do I offer? Well, I don't even know my why yet. Go figure out your why. And come on back. We open arms. All right? So just think about them chickens when you leave here. I know you'll never forget that. You'll be like, oh my God, everything is a mess. I, everything is confused. That's some chickens. The coop only holds 10, and you got 50. Somebody's going to be eating some chickens too. 
because they getting cooked. Those fried chicken, baked chicken, chicken sauteed, chicken tacos, right? But that's you giving it back to folks who are things. It could be folks are things. You got to give it back, All right? Okay, growth mindset. I know you see that. We kind of discussed it a little bit, but that's that self-education stuff. Like I said, I didn't know what I was doing being an Arthur man. In my first, I already got it uploaded on Amazon. I got copies printed, ordered a hundred more. I'm put. I started putting it on Ingram Spark this morning. Tons of stuff. I didn't know how to do this stuff, but you know what? Ain't nobody gonna do it for me, and I'm not gonna let somebody do something for me. Hold on. Everybody gotta listen to this. That I don't understand completely. Never will I do that. Investment group. Ooh we. That's growth, ain't it? See what I'm saying? That's skin the game. Like, I'm not gonna let somebody do something that I don't understand. Woo! Now, how many things we allow people to do that we have no clue about, but hey. You know, they're entrusted. Not just business. <laughs> Think about that. But that helps us with that support of the next generation. Is that if people are doing things and they don't understand it, and I take it upon myself to make sure I help them, I need to understand it fully. Then I need to tell their butts to sit down and listen. If not, they remove themselves from the space no matter the title, and it's okay, because everybody's human. First, it's okay. It's okay, yeah, that's, it's painful, yeah, because we're conditioned to say, man, I'm not supposed to reject my, you're not rejecting it, they're rejecting themselves. Whoa, see what I'm saying? Because they don't like the space they're in. So they, they remove themselves. You got nothing to do with it. You ain't even got to say a word about it. The only word come out of your mouth is the growth. The expectation. This What did you offer up? Did you see how it goes on any, anything? You can put it on anything. And it's okay because if you don't, you're not going to change a generation. You're going to sit there and be actively a participant of the degradation of that generation. You're going to actively participate in that. Why? Because you know. I can go right back to that. I, I'm not saying anything that don't go together. Because you know. So if you have money, if you have a purpose, and you have things, but you show people that you do look at me, you're not helping. Because that feeds right into the narrative. Let me be like my daddy. Look at him. Oh my God, look at it. And dad ain't even taught the son how to do math. But he knows math. It's because you know. See what I'm saying? That's important. When you come together, guess what? You got you, you to gotta roll your sleeves up. Quick story. I was in the Army for a while, but I had this task. And they said, Lee, you're the person we want to do it because... You, we know you know how to do it because you know, opened your mouth enough and we've seen what you do. We want you to create this. And creating that thing was back in 2020, no, it was 2003 or four. And you remember we were going to Iraq a lot, right? And they were killing soldiers on the highways. IEDs, you got, everybody's heard of those things. And they didn't have any tactical way, operational way to avoid it. Or to, to be, you know, ready and to, to, Increase the survivability of the soldier because they were dying like that. Oh, ID, missing legs, you're pulling your battle buddies off the ground, you're throwing them on the truck, and they are in 10 damn pieces, right? Okay, go create this. And, and I was working with a captain and a major, right? And this was at Fort Stewart, Georgia, in Savannah, or well, near Savannah, I think it's Hinesville. And I had a major part of it, like get it out there on the ground. Create it on the ground, test it on the ground so when people come through, have it to where they come through and they get the true live experience. Live bullets, everything. You name it, right? Never done it before. But the major man, we was working at 2 in the morning, come back at 6. 
uh, drive 30 minutes home, right? So that's an hour you give up off the hook. You know, so you're three hours. And by the time you get there, you look cross-eyed. If you take a shower, you take it, which most folks should always. By the time you lay down, you got maybe two hours, an hour and a half to get some rest and you're back on it. You know, he was tired one day. We're all tired, man. He was like, hey, you know, got to roll our sleeves up. I remember that. That helped me deal with my tiredness and not think about it because it was not about me. So you're going to work hard all day. You're going to be putting up with your family, working and doing, you got a thousand things going on. You're going to be, man, I'm over here. You know, my job got me locked down. I can't make it. It's late. I don't know if I want to do it. You're going to be like, my supporting family driving me crazy. Everybody wants something. Roll your sleeves up. Because it's not about you. It's about what you're creating. So that stuff around you, get it. So they can change at as young as age as possible so you're not 50 and 60 and 40 and 30 figuring it out, saying, oh, man, I'm tired of chasing that carrot. That carrot stank. Well, that's important. And I'm going to say this, this couple, I got a little couple of stories with my dad and our dad. Is, you guys got to look at my YouTube channel that's on there. You really got to look at it. My dad, man, he's like 76. Dad has been through all kinds of crap. And we were talking this past week or so. And we, dad, we brought up something about, well, my, I got a, uh, one of my friends. He's in the military. Um, he called me when I was with dad. And he was like, hey, Lee, have you seen this video? I was like, what are you talking about? Because he believes in conspiracy stuff, hundred percent, he loves it. But he's a, you know, he's a ordained minister, doctor's degree, everything. But conspiracy, yeah, yeah. And I don't dismiss anything because something has some truth, right? And we were talking, and he was talking about angels and and stuff like that. And Dad and I would start talking about, I think it was the, the Tower of Babylon, right? Is that it? That um, King Solomon was trying to build to get to heaven, right? I'm decent with the Bible. I'm decent. Um, and he was like, yeah, man, you know, they weren't supposed to see God. This is dead. Not talking. I'm like, yeah. I said, because technically it's impossible um, to build it up high enough, right? Because gravity will take it at some point. And then you can't breathe at another point. I said, yep. I said, um, and he and Dad was talking about how he, you know, bring them all down and, and confuse everybody. I said, Dad, now, I said, what if God was saying you're focused on the wrong thing. What you're trying to do is not in part with your capability and what you can truly do. And what did God do? God said, you know what? I'm going to make all y'all speak different languages. And I'm going to show you what you can do. Look at the world now. People are not worrying about one tower. Let me put you in your true capability. That's why we're here today. What you can truly do. That's why you got to know your why. What you can truly, you've been universally blessed with doing. You got hey, to roll them sleeves up man, and get it. You got to get, you got to make sure that you know your why and people around you know that you're striving to know your why. It's not rejection. It's support. Technically. They should sacrifice for you. I think it goes, you know, both directions. But usually it doesn't because the conditioned mind says you're being selfish, right? So people will say you're being selfish. Don't worry about that. You know, um, the bond. I would challenge everybody and the call to action is what you're creating right now is going to be forever. Know that. And build that bond and share and reach out to each other. Talk about your dreams that you have for this. You know, talk about those dreams because you already know you got them. You got the same passions. You have the same dreams. This is the best team to talk to. So everybody should have everybody's number in here. 
and challenge each other. Ask questions. You know, ask those questions to each other because you already know somebody in here is going to go help find it, without a doubt. Now, if you're not going to do that, you probably should raise your sandwich clamp now and say, hey, um, I just thought I was going to give somebody a couple bucks and re look at my bank statement. No, you're not. You're not. That's not why you're here. And that's not happening. Understand that. That's not happening because you're growing and creating something. That's what's happening. You know what I say? Look at me. You're thinking about a bank statement because you want to show people. But when you know your why, you could care less what people think. You grind it. All right? Makes sense? So this is right here. Don't let it go anywhere. You're bonded. Right now, as of today, that's my challenge to you. Because each one of you are a mover and shaker in here. 100%. Real estate, boom. Guess what? Guess what? Realtor, we need space. So when you come up with space that you think that we should have, drop it on the group. Say, hey, this is what I'm looking at. This is what I see. Maybe in, you know, I looked at the 10-year city plan. They're kind of going this way. The stuff right now, they're trying to gentrify but it's real cheap right now. Hey, can we get it? I don't know. Let's see. You see what I mean? You see what I'm saying? That's the bond you got right here. Tap into each other's capability and what they offer up. What do you offer? Stability. Okay. Stability. Stability. That means that whenever when they when it's time to organize the paperwork and it's time to get in there and and create, I don't know, task, you're going to be stable. You consistently, hey, you can come to me, and I'm working on it, and I can distribute. Realtor, what else you got to offer? Um, communication. Okay, come. You see what I'm saying? Y'all see, right? This is how we got to talk. What do you have to offer? Yeah. Say again? Yeah. That's good. Because who are we? They can need it. We're going to need it. And that means no matter what, she's going to be there. All right? What do you have to offer? Oh, okay, there you go. See? That, that's art. Can you crunch numbers? Oh. <coughs> See what I'm saying? What do you have to offer? Happy. Happen. Okay. Oh. What do you have to offer? And that's, see, that's huge. That is huge. Asking questions, you're asking your why. Not only your why, but the why. On what? Everything. What do you have to offer? Um, I'm a numbers person. You crunch numbers too. There you go. See what I mean? Definitely makes her happy because she don't have to do all the work. All right? What do you have to offer? Okay. See? See what I mean? What do you have to offer? It doesn't make sense. I need to know. Like, help me. Show me why. Help it make sense to me. Like, like question stuff. And see, the important thing is to all of this, everybody should have a question mark above their head right now because we don't know. It's, I call it known, unknown, guessing. Throw it against the wall. Throw it against the wall. Throw it like splat. Come on, let's go. Let's figure this out. And you, you might not figure out the truth of it or the process of it, but that's that question that together can be developed into an A answer that we all have. Right, you see, you look at the look. Everybody offer up something. Oh, my bad, man. You got this. Look, really, what you got to offer up? Uh, education. Education. Okay. Okay. Guidance. How, go ahead. Guidance. Guidance. Okay, that's good, man. I know I need guidance. Yeah, it's never ending. So you never get there. Hold on, you never get there. People say, hey, and like in my book, I say grownish. What what what's what what is an adult? What is that? I'm an adult now. What? <laughs> I'm grown. What? Like grown, huh? Because we're forever learning. We're forever growing. And then but complacency come in, you stop. So technically now, I don't know. 
So if you say I'm good where I am, technically you went back to childhood. If we say the hoods, right? Because you're stuck right there where you are. And one thing that we know, that, that big old console TV that great grandmama had, it's stuck where it is. And it becomes something holding something on top. But it has nothing to offer. And the person that has it know it's in the way. Everybody here has something to offer up. You know, you already, what else do you have to offer other than bringing folks together? I'm an encourager. I don't see defeat. I see anything that you might consider defeat. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And I can encourage you to the point where I can turn a house cat into a mountain lion. If they made me go. <laughs> That's good. Like, get him. And that's good, you know, and that's that's perfect, you see, because the bond that you are creating now by coming up here, by letting the folks who have dreams know your dreams, that's important. Because most people can't even get over that hump. But you say, oh, you know what? This is my dream. And dreams are, you know, and, and I can say this a thousand times. Most humans just want to be appreciated. Just appreciate me. You ain't got to do nothing else. Plain cake, appreciate me. And that's what dreams are, appreciation. Because you're vulnerable when you tell your dreams, right? And when somebody listens and encourages, they appreciate you sharing. And your passion. That's the bond. That's what I'm saying. The forever bond that you're creating. And I would say this. As you build this bond. Right. And technically I'm part of it. As you build it. Pay attention to each other. You heard everybody's dream here. Doggone it. You're going to encounter something in your daily life. That's going to support their dream. And you're supposed, to, you're supposed to come to you just like that. Hey, John, check this out, man. I, guess what? I just ran into this over here, over there. That's what you were trying to do, right? Yep. All right, here's the number and stuff. I got everything for you. There you go. Give him a call. See what I mean? See, hold on. I'm going to say something that we know. That's what the others do. It's not about them. And now, the others has no color, no race. I'm talking about the people that get it, the people that go getters, the creators. Right? They, that's what they do. Do you want to do that? I don't know. That's you discovering your why. Do you have the support team around you to help you do it? It doesn't matter because it's you. All you need is you. You're your best resource. If they don't get it, what do they do? What do they do? Everybody know the answer. If a person don't get it, what you try to do and you, what do they do? They remove themselves. Perfect. That's why I say sometimes titles now. <laughs> It'll confuse you. It's a chicken. And one thing I write about, and definitely volume two talks about titles. It can be that chicken that you can't let go. It can be that chicken that takes your motivation, takes your why, takes your drive. But all the time, that title was not what they seen you as. Ooh, that's deep, right? That's why when you understand your why and you're you, you know if those titles truly support you. If they truly love you, if they truly attentive to you, if they truly say it's not about me, it's about you. That's scary sometimes. But boy, that's going to project you and rocket you to where you're trying to go. Because then you don't have to worry about that chicken. Because that chicken is eating, laying eggs. It don't go back in the coop. Or that chicken might need to go in the stew pot. At least you know. 
perfect. Right? So that's why I say, hey, it doesn't matter what's around you. It's you doing all the things we talked about, the why, the offer up, what's expected of me, etc. Embrace that stuff. Right? And does anybody have any questions? <laughs> I know I, I run my mouth, but do you have a question? On anything? No, you have a statement you want to make? No, but I just understand what you mean as far as <clears throat> because having <clears throat> tried doing mm -hmm. something similar to this in the past and I bought some property mm -hmm. and, and, and when I hold it, I don't have to hold it like this. Now. When I was um attempting to get started, um, you know, I met with all the key people who would, would help me with the project and, and some of the advice that you're giving that I got um was you know, like stay away from firefighters. Mm -hmm. Because and, and it was the same thing as far as going to people with an idea, and if they don't understand it, they immediately put your fire out. Mm -hmm. And and you're right, the people who understand what you want will be there. But I literally found no one to buy into my dream because they couldn't see it. But once the dream took place and became into fruition, and uh, they could see the property and they could mm -hmm. see where I was making money. Hey, skimmers! You, you need help? Yeah, I skimming. And so that that was a, a very important point that I mm -hmm. think that you brought brought forward, and, and also the bond, um, because it's it's a bond different than family. But because with with family, you get caught up with emotions sometimes, and emotions take place of decision making where you you don't need those emotions; you need reality. And face reality, sometimes it's hard to do with people that you care about because you don't want to hurt them. So you, you mm -hmm. tend to, to make moves based on those emotions and not what's practical and what's what makes sense. And so having that type of bond with people is, is something that's not easily gained either because it takes trust. And and that's something that has to be developed over a period of time. And so Maybe one of the things that I thought that you brought out was well was finding a way to stay in contact and, and build relationships. As, as you move forward, because, um, you know, I can look at everyone in this room, and no one in this room knows me. So this this is, you know, something that I know would, would I won't necessarily be a challenge, but it's going to be a task, mm -hmm. you know, so, and, and something that you have to make a concerted effort to do. It, it won't just happen. You know, we, we can meet a hundred times, but if we don't make an effort to build relationships within that time, then we'll just meet a hundred times and leave as, as strangers each time. So mm -hmm. I, I just want oh, those were two good points that you made. Okay, cool. Pass the mic to the left, to the right, to the right. Mm. <laughs> um, let's see. You want to take away? Just whatever you want to say. It's the, it's okay. So um, the biggest thing is, like you said, there. None of this is ever about me or the person that is doing this because there's always a greater purpose and so um i feel like everybody in here has a um i guess it's it's not even really self-gratification but being able to achieve things and goals and in turn you're helping somebody else so it's all just a matter of it's a bigger picture it's always a bigger picture and um as it all grows and comes into place, I think we'll see you understand your why more to me. I feel like once things grow and you start seeing the fruits of your labor and then your why kind of reveals itself. So sometimes even when you don't really understand it from the, from the very beginning, I feel like as these things start to shape up and take place, it shows itself and then you understand your why and your purpose and you continue to grow and do better. Okay. Now, let me say this to you. Mm -hmm. Your why has nothing to do with what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's your why when you lay in bed at night. Mm -hmm. Your why. Because if it's your why, this is something that an adventure you're going on. You know what you offer. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with these folks. Zero. Because when you offer and you got skin in the game, you're going to help the process. 100% help the process. Okay.
All right, man, what you got for us? Uh, I mean, for myself, a lot of things you said, uh, really, because there's a lot of things that we talk about, uh, especially when new people come to the industry, and I explain to them that, uh, especially doing something that's not easy, because uh, if it was easy, anybody and everybody would do it, right? But the biggest piece is having and knowing what your why is. Once you understand that, then you understand what your purpose is. Uh, and then in that, you also understand that, okay, everybody is not designed to see that purpose and that vision, and that's okay. But aligning yourself with those who do see it, that's mm-hmm. the important piece. Because uh, then with that, that's where you're going to find the encouragement. That's where you're going to find the ideas. That's where you're going to find that it's easy to do it because now you're moving forward as a group versus individually. Uh, one of my mentors already says, if, uh, you know, if you want to go somewhere, you can go alone. But if you want to go there fast, go with others. Correct. Um, and just being able to resonate that to where everybody can see and have that mentality is once everybody's on that same frequency and we all know what everybody's, like you said, what everybody's strength is, what our weaknesses are, what we bring to the table. And then with that, collectively have a vision in the group and say, now all we do is work together as a unit and we go get that. Yeah. Makes sense. Pass it back. Hey, take a couple pictures. I don't I really what he said. Okay, that's perfect. He said some good stuff. Yeah, he did. You know, I think that um, for me, the why is my passion. Okay, it's the thing that drives me. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's just more or less like the thing that you, know, you just can't get away from. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's just, it's there. Give me one example of the thing. I mean, um, for me, um, for instance, that what I'm actually doing right now, we're actually starting to do, mm-hmm. right? It's a passion to see just the many things, right, that mm-hmm. um, I'm talking about community, okay. okay, that I see in our community when it comes to our girls, okay. right? The things that um, they're not able to get, the things that, you know, uh, I believe in the village. Okay. And, you know, and being, I'm, I'm 60 years old, okay? okay? I'm at a place where I'm, I'm seeing, right, I am that part of that village, right? And if I don't reach back and I don't actually give that generation what they need, right, they won't have it. You know what I'm saying? So for me, the my passion is, right, to actually give what I have and what I feel like I okay. need to give back. Okay. That makes sense? That's cool. Well, Go ahead. Keep going. Okay. I'm Good just, oh, <laughs> my, my voice like, is kind of. No problem. Going through a change is, I don't know what it is, the weather or what, but um, I'm trying to figure out is your motivational speaker, your preacher, or what you oh, say? Oh, me? <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, I'm just trying to. See. For me? Yeah. I don't sell anything. I have a book, but I just develop teams and leaders, and I would like people to look at things based on my, my passion is. I would say my book series, maybe. That's my, my patent. Not to sell it, yeah. but to get people to understand their why. Because that's critical, I think. And that's my give back to the community, right? So my give back is, come on, let's not chase those carrots. Come on. You know, if you're going to have folks around you that are passionate about caring about people, that's, hey, hold on now. Most people need compensation for that. Right. So, you know, and if when you when you do read my book, right, one thing I say is it's not a six step program. It's not something to follow because you are what you follow. You have to be your own best resource for everything. Because what do we see nowadays? People dump these 29 steps in your lap. You're like, really? I can do eight of them. But the eight might not have anything with your do with your purpose. Right? No, you have to create your own steps. You. And the only way you know is that you're why. So that's my that's I'm selling, man. Come on. Snap out of it. Understand your why. I I tell you one thing that I do. So this is just me. So whenever I was a hiring manager, I made sure, you know, I don't, you know, people might be questionable. I made sure I looked at the people who wouldn't have the chance. I'm sorry. Who wouldn't have the chance to get in that industry first. 
You know, you know why? Because people who got it got more options. Yes. People who don't got it, man, they not getting in. Or when they get in, it's not the end. It's the lowest. I was hiring folks that were making 60000 off the hook and was clueless about the job. Clueless. I said, hey, here's the answer to the test. When you get here, I got a system that's going to get you there. Why do I say that? I say that because that's an industry standard to get people in the industry that are not capable of handling the position, but they are coached and trained once they get in. Now, certain folks get that leverage. They get the scale a little heavier on their side, like the type of people who own the business. All right, but I was like, hey, whatever. I got this. And a whole lot of people have a whole lot of careers that they would not even have gotten the opportunity to be in. And I don't even want to thank you. I'm like, you just pass it on. Take care of somebody else. Oh, yeah.